everybody and welcome to the third video in the series on the overhaul of this Gardner 6 LXB. In today's video we're going to strip off all the ancillary components from around the engine and remove the cylinder heads and cylinder block. If we find anything on the way we'll take a closer look. So before we get going I thought we'd have a quick check of the crankshaft end float. Because this engine's from a vehicle and has always been coupled to a manual gearbox with clutch Every time you put your foot on the clutch, it tries to push the crankshaft towards the front of the engine. This means that you can see wear on the thrust faces of the crankshaft and the associated bearings that you normally wouldn't see in an engine like a Gensex that doesn't have this endwise load. So let's take a look. So at that measurement, the end float is a little over the top of tolerance, so that will need addressing during rebuild. Now in the last video, we removed the intake and exhaust manifolds to investigate the smoke a bit closer, so we'll start on that side. So let's get started removing the water pipe work. We'll start with the bypass pipe before moving on to the water pump to block pipe work, water pump and then the top rails and thermostat housing. So I wasn't expecting to run into an issue so soon. The bypass pipe is completely blocked up with corrosion where it connected with the thermostat housing. That would have stopped water circulating when the thermostat is shut. Right, let's move on and see what else we find. So now we've got the cover off the water pump, we can take a look inside. Sometimes these can be quite corroded, but this one's looking pretty good. Let's remove the water pump. Now we'll move on to getting the thermostat housing off. Let's open it up and take a look inside. That's not looking promising, there's quite a lot of muck in here. Let's see what we find as we go deeper. Looking onto the end of the thermostat housing, it doesn't look much better in here either. We'll get the end cover off and the thermostat out and take a look. Ah, the thermostat housing isn't looking that great internally. It's full of crystallised antifreeze. It's completely blocked the bypass in the casting. So now we've finished removing all the ancillaries on this side of the engine, let's move on to the fan and the front end. 
So those are some very dry, rumbly sounding bearings. I don't think they've seen grease in a long while. So now we've finished removing the fan and the compressor off the front end of the engine, let's move on to the injection pump side and have a look in the oil filter. So it's a little bit gungy at the bottom of the oil filter and within the housing, but it's not too bad. So let's get the rocker covers off and take our first look inside. So now the rocker covers are off, you can see it's fairly grubby in here and quite a lot of built up carbon. So with the covers out the way, let's get the injector pipes off. So although all the others have come out, these two injectors, the inlet tube into the injector has come loose at the lower bit, so we'll have to take the whole injector out to get the injector pipe off. So now we've got the return line and the injector clamps out of the way, we can remove the injector with the pipe still connected. So the reason why we couldn't get the injectors out and had to take them out with the pipe connected is the extension has come loose from the top of the injector. So we'll have to split these apart now. Right, let's take a look inside the fuel filter. So this is pretty good. It's obviously had a filter recently. So that's the cam box ready to come off, let's get it lifted off out of our way.
So this gear in Helix is what controls the advance and retard of injection pump timing in relation to your throttle. So now the cam box is out of the way, let's get ready to remove the heads and block. So now the cylinder heads are off, let's take a look at the cylinder bores. Now I haven't cleaned the carbon off from the very top of each cylinder yet, but I can feel that there's quite a sizeable ridge at the top of the bore. We'll get the block off and then get the bore mic out and have a look how warm they are. So now the cylinder block has been removed from the engine and the carbon cleaned from the tops of the bores, let's measure up what their condition is like. So hopefully the lighting is good enough and you can see, but there is, even with the carbon gone, there is quite a ridge at the tops of each cylinder. So let's get the ball mic out and have a look. So this bore gauge has been zeroed at the standard four and three quarter inches, um, which the bore on an LX and LXB is. Um, let's see how worn these are. So the limit for wear is 12 thousandths of an inch. And what we have here, which is basically where the top piston ring stops when it's at the top of his travel, is just under 12 and a half thousandths of an inch. So cylinder one is going to need a new cylinder liner. Now this is cylinder two, and this cylinder has 13 and a half, nearly 14 thou over nominal bore. So this will also need a new cylinder liner. So I've measured the rest of these cylinder liners and other than cylinder 6, which is just under tolerance, the rest are all beyond the 12 foul limit. So for the rebuild, this block will need new cylinder liners, boring, and the block facing. So that's all we've got time for on this video, but join us in the next video where we'll start on the bottom end.
If you've enjoyed watching this video, please consider liking and subscribing. Thank you for watching and see you next time.